In this video, I'd like to show you the lab that I'm using for SDA. So in this case, I'm using even G for this lab. Also for the SDA fabric, you can use the Catalyst 9K, the virtual ones uh, that are included when you get the CML from Cisco. So you can import those Catalyst 9K and you can use them as a border control plane or as a H devices. And also I'm using a DNA center and it's also a virtual appliance. Basically I'm running everything in one single physical server that is running EXI. So just keep in mind that the virtual Catalyst 9K is not stable 100%. I mean, you will find problems when you discover the device, when you provision the device, or even when you try to add to the fabric, you will find some issues. For example, the ones that I found is, uh, were related to certificates. Oh, for example, when you try to provision the device, you uh, it, it will take a, a lot of time that provisioning. Uh, it's not really stable, at least not this version. Hopefully, Cisco will come with a new version and more stable version that you can use. But anyway, I think for testing purposes, I think it's good because I was able to build the DNAC fabric. So you will have a better understanding how LDA works. So. As I mentioned, I have everything in one single server. I use my EVNG and I connect the DNA center is another Bitcoin machine. My Windows Server 2019 is running the CA, the DNS and the DHCP. And so also I have this router the main router or the DC main, which is basically the device that is responsible to propagate the segment. Or oh, not all the segment, I just created static routes that point only to the main controller that I need. So, because I, I'm running as the one also. So let me show you what is the configuration that I have. And something that you need to keep in mind here is that I have my BRF 10 that is equal to my corporate Bitcoin network. And also I have the BRF 40 that is related to my guest Bitcoin network. So let me show you what configuration I have here. Let me open this. I think I have it. Let me close all these and let me open this. Okay, so with the one. Okay, so as you can see here, I define my static routes. Those are part of the VRF 10, which is related to my corporate uh, virtual network. I then the this is the Windows Server 2019, which is my CA, DACP, DNS. This is I. No, I think this is the DNA center and this is I, and this is the default gateway. And the next hop is the router that I mentioned is the default gateway for all that segment, which is the IPS2. This is the gateway for all my controller site, for all the devices that are located in the site to 55. And then but this is in global routing table. That's the reason why I'm missing this device because I need a way to send those segments to my BRF10, which is related to my virtual network that uh, is assigned for uh, corporate users. So let me go to the remote uh, DC50 site and you will see that the router one is receiving uh, those those routes. So let me long here so I mean and 
let's check the OMP table. Show the one OMP uh, route. And you will see that <clears throat> I received the networks related to my controllers. And this is the Bismarck, and this is the system IP assigned to the DC main. So if I check DC main, you will see that 107 is the system IP assigned to this DC main. Okay, so after that, you will see also that I have here I have a fusion router. The fusion router I'm using for establish EVGP between the EVGP between the DC2 router 1 and DC2 router 2. They establish EVGP. This is the service VPN the service VPN 10 and I have I'm and I have another VPN as I mentioned before 40 which is for guests. So I have EVGP so I send all these routes related to these controllers to the fusion and this is global routing table. Now once something that you also need to keep in mind is that your devices, the ones that will be part of the SDA fabric or part of the fabric those devices need to be able to reach dna center it's, uh, the enterprise ip otherwise you won't be able to discover those devices so basically that's the reason why i establish all this communication between my site 255 and my, uh, my site dc50 because uh, otherwise you won't be able to discover those devices Right. So in this case, I created the template with the necessary configuration that you need for the discovery. I'm going to show you that, but that's something that you need to keep in mind. These devices must reach the enterprise IP assigned to the DNA center. Otherwise, you won't be able to discover those devices. I'm not using LAN automation or something like that. It was a manual discovery. Let me open the DNA center. Okay, I'm here. So let me go first to the discovery portion. Here you will see that I have three devices. One that is assigned for my border control plane one, another for my border control plane two, and one edge device. So if I open here, you will see that, let's go and view all the details. I use SSA, I use the loopback, I define my uh, credential for CLI and also SNMP and also netconf. I don't know why it's failing this when netconf is enabled, but anyway, I, I found that, I don't know why I can't, the, DNA Center can discover um, through NetConf. I'm, I'm not quite sure why. Um, so once you have that, then you can go to provisioning and the inventory. And here's something is what I mentioned. The, the version is not 100% stable. For example, this process has been almost for one day running. I don't know what is going on. And the synchronization between DNA Center and the device is, is, is normally takes a lot of time. But as you can see here, I was able to provision the devices also. Here I have this success. This is failing. I need to check why this is my H device. But at least my border and control plane nodes are up. And you can see that I add those devices to my fabric. So if I go to fabric site and then I move here to break L and then you will see that I was able to add those devices to 
my fabric size so let's see here the details you will see here the details about the layer 3 handoff and also this is my border control plane 2 device right and here and let me open uh, my MNG is here this is the border control plane 1 uh, let me open the border control plane 2 also so what I want to show you is the BGP portion that was pushed by DNAC so this is the configuration that was pushed by DNA center the only thing is that I redistribute the manually show IPBGP, VPM4, Unicast, uh, VRF, Corp. So my, you will see that my corporate virtual network or the VRF is up and I'm receiving these networks. Uh, also my global, my infra PN is up, show IPBGP summary, you will see that it's also is up and show uh, Lisp uh, sessions so you will see that also um, I have my uh, Lisp sessions up between the border control 1 and the border control 2 and let me show you the section Lisp this is the configuration that was pushed by DNA Center as you can see here, all the Lisp portion, the service IPv4, the, this is the control border plane node 1, this is node 2, the instance, and in this case the only thing that is here is the slash 30 that was pushed to establish the EVGP session, this is for corporate, and I haven't had any user segment, not yet, but I will do it. This is a high level about the lab that I'm using and you will see that you are able now to um, simulate the SDA portion and in this case you will need to buy a physical equipment which is also really expensive so now you are able to use the virtual catalyst 9k a lab so thanks for watching